I've put a lot of thought into this whole dynamic island thing for the new iPhone 14. And if you're unfamiliar, basically what they did is they got rid of the notch with the iPhone 14, 14 Pro. They have an, an elongated capsule looking shape around the camera that expands and takes on different shapes and sizes and purposes depending on what app you're using and what like notifications, interactions, complications, things like that. Kind of neat and it, it looks pretty fluid like they've actually done a good job on this however it got me thinking about the fold 4 and how basically the entire phone is a dynamic island and i kind of like the way this works out better and it's one of these things where i want to talk about the idea of maybe one day will apple ever get into foldables and if so well those cool things like the uh dynamic island might actually be something that would be helpful but the iteration that I see here with the Fold 4, it's so nice because when you talk about this dynamic island in the iPhone, you, you get the notifications, the pop-ups, the expanded capabilities for doing things, and you kind of think about that in the terms of a foldable phone, you get the front screen, and basically this right here, the front screen is like your dynamic island with actually full functionality, and then when you want the entire island, bam, you open it up and you get all of this space. So I think that it's cool that Apple is trying to do something different. They're trying to make purpose where purpose didn't exist before, taking a major point of frustration because one thing that especially Samsung and other Android manufacturers have been trying to do for a long time is to get rid of the camera module where you can't see it. And that's where you enter stage right. We actually have the under the screen camera here on the Fold 4. Pretty cool. It doesn't do any shapes and sizes, but you don't need to do shapes and sizes when the whole phone has two shapes and sizes. You get the more compact version. It's like the mullet of smartphones. You know, business in the front, party in the back, <laughs> uh, except, I don't know. It, apparently, mullets are making a comeback. No offense to anyone that has a mullet, but they weren't something that really anyone cared about before other than Billy Ray Cyrus, who managed to rock it out for a couple of years. At least Miley Cyrus hasn't gone with the mullet route yet, I don't think. But if she does, apparently they're they're hip, they're cool, they're trendy. Uh, I'm losing more hair in the front than I am in the back, so I guess that's all I've got going for me. But when you talk about the dynamic island, you talk about nifty things that Samsung is also trying to do with their phones. One of the big things that I've seen a lot over the last couple of days is everybody is singing the praises for this new UI, user interface implementation, the dynamic island, and saying that Samsung will copy it. Well, one, I don't think Samsung needs to copy it. Two, the way that the user interface is designed on Android and the way that it works and flows, I don't see that being something that is going to be a universally thing that they're going to try and copy. I think they'll try and do their own thing. And this is where LG would come in handy because LG was always good about trying to create new things that really never worked but at least they tried, right? So Samsung tries sometimes, but it also goes back to like the billboards and the things that Samsung is putting up saying, hey, you know, we've been flexing and folding for what, like three years now when it, Apple's not doing anything like that. So it's nothing that I think that we necessarily need to equate over into the Android world. I don't think Samsung will try to do something exactly identical to that. They're doing other things like trying to remove being able to see the finger, like the camera under the screen. So that takes away the idea of actually having to hide it that way. Instead of putting lipstick on it, they're trying to get rid of it. And I like the idea of trying to get rid of it instead of putting lipstick on it and trying to make it look pretty. So I'd rather have this and this than just that little construct of a bubble that changes and shapes and sizes so you can do different things with it. However, I will give them credit. I think that it's something novel that they've done. I totally out of left field. I don't think anybody saw that coming. It was so crazy because when they patented, apparently they, I think they patented in like Jamaica where you had to go and you have to basically file and search for pat like patents in person, which is why nothing came up. There are people out there who so closely watch these things so they can report them, so they can talk about them, so they can leak them. This patent was filed, I, I think it was Jamaica. If not, it was some small Caribbean island. And the only way you could search their records there is to go physically do it in person, at least from what I was reading. Crazy stuff that the Apple legal team was doing. I wish that they could have come up with something better than the dynamic island. I, I still, every time I hear it, I think Lonely Island, like the band, which has some funny music. But again, 
Apple is not leading the innovative world here as when it comes to hardware, and Samsung and Android are doing a lot of interesting things in that department. And I think that this, this dynamic island that has a small island that turned into a big island, uh, I think that this has a lot of merit to it, and I think that Samsung's done a great job with it, and I think they're leading the way. I thought about making a separate video about this, maybe I will, but there's a reason that Samsung is king of foldables, and that is the software experience. And there's a lot of ways that Samsung is leading in the Sam in the uh, sorry in the software experience, making things useful. And that's one thing that frustrates me. Still to this day, it's cool you can do cool things with that dynamic island bubble, but I still can't move my app icons where I want without having to completely shift the entire page. And for somebody who has clinically diagnosed obsessive compulsive disorder, it really irks me. Uh, it's so frustrating to me. Like I'll have to take screenshots of exactly how my icons are. So if something moves or changes, I can go put it back the way that I want it to be because it really, I don't like it. It throws my stuff off. So one of the great innovative things that's better, I think, than Lonely Island, than the Dynamic Island, using the taskbar on here. The taskbar is so cool. Now you've got this taskbar down here on the bottom. You can just pop in and out of different things. It's so easy. You can switch seamlessly back and forth, no problems. And then if you want, you can pop it up on the second page. So let's say I've got Twitter here. Bam, I'll drag that right there. I've got two screens working seamlessly like that. So I, I think that this is not a pro Samsung. Let's praise them for the things that they're doing. I like to see innovation. I like it when I see it in software. I like it when I see it in hardware. Dynamic Island is something that's going to be interesting. I'm sure people are going to love it. And it's going to be a great way for Apple to set themselves apart and make people who have, you know, the iPhone 13s and previously feel poor. Because now instead of having the notch, it has the dynamic island and that little pill capsule set, it, set up for the camera. I like this. I, I, there's a lot of stuff to like here when it comes to multitasking and the very thoughtful approach, especially with Android 12L, underpinning One UI on here. They've done some good stuff. So, yeah. So I, I think that Samsung, I don't think that they need to copy Apple and try and do this. I think that Samsung is doing a lot of good stuff on their own already, being very innovative on the hardware front, also on the software front. And I think they're quite a few years ahead in that department. I, I think Apple doesn't take it seriously. Maybe they're working on something. Maybe they filed another patent in the Virgin Islands at some patent office there where you can't search, period, and we'll get something next year. But when you look at everybody praising this new dynamic island, but then you also look at the fact that the iPhone 14 is the iPhone 13, essentially S, which is barely even an S model because there's effectively no real change there. And they're selling it for the same price this year with last year's chipset in it. Yeah, that's cool that you got a little bubble that, around your camera that opens up, but I'd rather see more, you know, pushing that on the frontier on the hardware side and the software side and give people a really cool upgraded and meaningful hardware experience. So gonna sign off on this one. What do you think? Do you think that there's a lot of innovation that's overlooked on the part of Android and the Samsung side and that there's too much praise when it comes to simple little things like a you know, bubble that changes shapes <laughs> for notifications and interactions or being able to do something like this? It's hard to sit there and say Apple is so amazing when it comes to that one thing but then you also look at the fact that there's no real changes across the board. And then we've got this. So just, I don't know, just something I was thinking about. So that's all I've got. Let's talk about it. Go to the comment section. We'll have some conversation there. If you enjoyed the video, if you like this thought-provoking stuff, then please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you guys next time.